Dragon Ball, written by Akira Toriyama, is often referred to as the godfather of modern shonen manga and anime. Responsible for introducing millions of people to this form of entertainment, its popularity is out of this world. From the merchandising, the shows, the clothes, the games, the movies, the live action movie that we will not be discussing, to the way it resonates with pop culture to the point where almost everybody has tried to shoot a Kamehameha or go Super Saiyan. This franchise is something massive and at the forefront of it is the head of one man leading it all, Son Goku. If Dragon Ball is the godfather of shonen manga and anime, it's only fair to call Goku the father of shonen MCs or main characters. His influence is sprawled all throughout characters like Naruto, Ichigo, Luffy, and arguably characters like Gon and Itadori, who funny enough mentioned that he wanted to be able to do a Kamehameha. I mention all of this to provide some context and some scale for what comes next. It needs to be established that Goku is one of, if not the, most popular anime character ever created. Now even with that being the case, Goku is not without his fair share of criticisms. People have lamented that he doesn't change over the course of the story, or that he's a bad father. Although more present in Dragon Ball Super, a lot of people also say that he's too stupid. And others just don't like how much he's able to power up or how often he wins. When it comes to the Dragon Ball community, these are the main gripes I've seen against Goku, and I want to attack them all right here right now starting with the people who complain that he doesn't change over the course of the story. The first thing that needs to be understood about this is that there's a difference between growth and change. Growth is when someone's heart remains in the same place that it always has. However, it is expressed in a different way. Change is when the fundamental beliefs of one are shifted. I touched on this in my last video, but someone like Gohan grew from his time in the Sand Saga to the Namek Saga. Throughout both sagas, he always wanted to help the Z Fighters, and he always wanted to aid people who couldn't defend themselves, but he didn't have that courage in the Sand Saga at the start of it. Throughout it, he gained that confidence in order to express himself in a way that helped out his team. There was never a change, just growth. Contrast that with Piccolo, who believed himself to be a demon who only cared about power and had no care for human life. He changed when he met Gohan and then became one of the most loving characters in the show. This exemplifies a positive character arc. Someone started off bad and then turned good. The inverse of that, a character starting off as good and then turning bad, like Zamasu, is a negative character arc. Both of these arcs require change. Goku is neither, however. He's a positive, flat character. Now, this doesn't mean that he knows all. Far from it, actually but Goku does have the fundamentals in the right place. There's no need for them to change. What he does do, however, is grow. While Goku's main motivation has always been, and always will be, his love of fighting, he still holds that mantle of being Earth's mightiest defender. No, not in a Superman sense, but he cares about the people on Earth and wants to protect it. Who's he going to fight if he has no planet? At the start of Dragon Ball Z, and throughout all of OG Dragon Ball, Goku is only worried about boosting his own strength. He has strong friends, but they're all self-motivated. Everything he did was to push himself further, and then he used his strength to defend Earth. After the Frieza saga, however, there is growth in that mindset. He still loves fighting, and he still wants to protect Earth, but he starts looking for protectors outside of himself. Even before that, he has to undergo a lesson about accepting his Saiyan biology. Upon first hearing about it from Raditz, he is in denial. And during his first fight with Vegeta, we have an underappreciated moment. In one of the few instances where Dragon Ball Z references OG Dragon Ball, Goku pieces it together that he was the one that killed his grandfather. This brings about the first time we see Goku accept the fact that he's a Saiyan. However, he doesn't feel pride in his Saiyan heritage until he comes to the battlefield on Namek to face Final Form Frieza. Having inherited Vegeta's will from his dying breath, Goku proudly shouts, I am a Super Saiyan. That is growth. It happened over time and was organic to the story. And it is disingenuous to act like Goku doesn't have this growth. He does, and there are countless more examples of this, especially if I include OG Dragon Ball. 
So, I would consider that first criticism baseless. Now on to the next criticism of Goku, where people say he's a bad father. I honestly didn't know people were being serious when I first heard this take. I knew that it was a joke in TFS, and TFS was freaking awesome, but <laughs> it's very different from the real show. Goku has shown countless times to be a good father. Has he made mistakes? Yes, but on multiple occasions he has shown he is willing to die for Gohan. At no point in the show has Goku actively avoided Gohan to go do something else. And outside of fighting, Goku is shown to be his happiest when he's with his family. I don't know if anyone remembers it, but during the Cell Saga, we see scenes of Goku at his most zen and happy just being with his family. He was always smiling, wasn't worried about anything, had his guard down to the point that Krillin was able to hurt him with a rock. He genuinely looked like just the proudest and most appreciative father in the whole show. And just in case anybody forgot, Goku died twice in Dragon Ball Z protecting Gohan. And all of his happy moments and sacrifices shouldn't be taken away just because Gohan's best friend happens to be Piccolo. And I'm focusing on Gohan so much because Dragon Ball doesn't really seem to care about Goten, but even Goten has gotten love from Goku. Upon this first meeting, they have this really cute and wholesome interaction. And it's clear that even though Goku's been dead, he's happy and looks forward to spending time with his other son. So honestly, calling Goku a bad father just isn't a good take. It's not backed by anything that was in the show and is really formulated from an abridged series on YouTube. All respect to Team 4 Star, but you guys shouldn't be dragging those jokes into actual takes. It was a joke and it should be treated as such. Now in regard to the take that Goku is too stupid, this is a kind of funny take to deal with. OG Dragon Ball started with Goku knowing next to nothing. He couldn't even tell a man from a woman. And that's not an exaggeration. He would literally go up to people and pat them because he didn't understand personal space either. He's always been portrayed as a fighting genius, but never been the sharpest tool in the shed. And I think people even unfairly hate on Super for this. For some reason, I noticed a lot of people think I hate Dragon Ball Super. I don't. <laughs> like. I noticed the issues with it and I much prefer Z and Dragon Ball, but there were still some good moments in it. Like, I, I don't full on hate it. I just think there were things that could have been done better. And while Goku did have more stupid moments and some really questionable writing choices, why does Goku not know what a kiss is? That was very odd. Those moments were still gag moments. When it came time to be serious, Goku still knows how to be serious. I'd say he did a phenomenal job in the Goku Black arc when he heard that Black had killed Chi-Chi and Goten and Gohan. He was on go. And the fact that that arc had a really bad ending shouldn't take away from how they acted all throughout it. Or right before the Universal Tournament when Goku went to draft Frieza. It was tense negotiation and a fresh situation for Goku to be in, talking to Frieza, needing his aid, and having all the leverage in the world to get him to do what he wants. When the going gets tough, Goku is always the first to get going. And of course, in Z, Goku is never really that stupid. All throughout the Saiyan Saga and the Frieza Saga, he always has a mission and is kept pretty serious throughout those arcs. And even during the Majin Buu Saga, Goku still has that moment where Supreme Kai tells him not to fight Vegeta. And as a response, Goku threatens to kill the Supreme Kai. Now is this a bluff? We don't know. But the fact that we don't know should be a sign to tell you that Goku gets serious and isn't too stupid. Now, as far as Goku being too powerful or winning too often, these things just aren't true. If you want to argue that as a show, Dragon Ball allows its characters to become too powerful, that's one thing, and it's probably true. But arguing that Goku himself is allowed to get too powerful, or that Goku wins too much, is just false. Goku starts off the series by losing to Raditz, and then when he has to team up and fight against him, he still technically loses because he dies. Piccolo gets the killing blow. And when he comes back from his training to fight Vegeta and Nappa, he gets the win on Nappa, but loses again to Vegeta. Once again, not getting the final blow on that either. On Namek, Goku comes, beats Birder and Jace, but 
technically loses to Captain Ginyu when he gets his body switched and is in that extremely injured Captain Ginyu body. He had to be saved. And then when he gets healed up, he fights Frieza in what I believe to be an underrated fight where he is getting pummeled for <laughs> over an hour and then gets his real first win on a major villain in Dragon Ball Z. And then after that, in the Android Saga, he loses to Android 19, he gets healed, trains with Gohan, loses to Cell, dies in that arc, comes back to life, loses to Majin Vegeta because he let his guard down, and then loses to Boo because he doesn't finish him off, while he had the chance in Super Saiyan 3. Later, when he does defeat Kid Buu, it's with the power of everyone through the spirit bomb. Now, did I just oversimplify the story and take out context? Yes, but it is still true. Goku loses a fair amount in Dragon Ball Z, and he has never really had a problem with being too powerful. Goku is honestly a phenomenally balanced character, and there's a reason why he's the head of one of the most popular anime of all time. He deserves all of the credit that he's given, and he is one of the main reasons for Dragon Ball's success. With that being said, I would love to end the video here and ride off into the sunset, but there is one gripe that I would like to discuss. My gripe. In my video titled, Why Vegeta Doesn't Work in Dragon Ball Super, I once referenced Goku as being a 2010s John Cena. Early 2010s, specifically, as that's when John Cena would be on the show every single week, pushing storylines forward and making things happen. In the same way that John was being used for everything in the WWE during that time period, Goku is being used in that way in Dragon Ball Super. Now, this is done for all the reasons that I've stated throughout this video. Goku is a phenomenal character. People love Goku. And so, they decided that they want to have Goku on screen as much as possible because that's what's best for business. However, I just don't think it is. Keeping with the WWE comparisons, Goku was like John Cena in the early 2010s in Dragon Ball Super, but in Dragon Ball Z, he was much more like the tribal chief, Roman Reigns. For those of you who don't know, Roman Reigns was the undisputed WWE Champion for over three years in WWE. These three years were all consecutive, and the way that they kept him fresh and kept people wanting Roman Reigns was by not having him on every week like John Cena before him. No, Roman Reigns only appeared for big pay-per-views, big storylines, and it was always something big whenever he was on screen. Similarly, Goku was used kind of sparingly in Dragon Ball Z. When he first showed up at the start of Dragon Ball Z, it was to handle Raditz, and then he dies within the first five episodes. After that, he's training, and the next time we see him with the rest of the Z Fighters, some of them are dead, and it's because he is coming to face Vegeta and Nappa. In the same way that Piccolo and Gohan and others pushed the show forward while Goku was dead, when he is paralyzed in his fight with Vegeta, and then training on his way to Namek, the story keeps on being pushed forward with Gohan, Krillin, Bulma, Vegeta, and the Frieza Force. Goku was not used to push the story forward at every single chance he could. He was only used at the climaxes, or he'd be shown sparingly throughout the buildup in order to get your appetite wet for that climax. Because of how he was handled in Z, every time Goku appeared on screen, you got excited. You were looking forward to him and you were pulling for him to come through and save the Z Fighters. But because of his popularity and the fact that he just works, the Dragon Ball Super anime overuses Goku. And this not only hurts him, but it hurts the people around him. In the same way that most people couldn't comprehend what WWE would look like without that early 2010s John Cena during that time frame, because Cena had so much screen time and was used to push everything forward, a similar effect happens in Dragon Ball Super. Goku has been at the forefront so long that things don't really feel important if he's not on screen. And at the same time, the other characters have been irrelevant for so long you don't really want to see them on screen. Now, because he's Goku, the product will never be that bad. 
it just isn't going to be as good as it could be. And as a lifelong Dragon Ball fan, I just want to see the product reach new heights. And if I see an opportunity for that to be done, I'm going to push for it. This right here, leading with Goku every single episode and using him to push everything, it can lead to monotony and won't improve the story. You're going to have to reel back on Goku a bit and push with other people. And you have the people for it. Broly is honestly who I would move with going forward. I'm not saying he, or anybody else for that matter, needs to replace Goku. I'm just saying that he is somebody that I would love to see get more screen time. His movie was phenomenal, and if you have him interact with people like Vegeta or Gohan without Goku on screen, I think that you really work yourselves into building up to something great once again. Goku is a phenomenal character, but do not get lost entirely in the Goku sauce. Don't forget the rest of the story around you. Don't forget about the other amazing characters around you and use them to build up Goku to truly be what he's meant to be. He's not an everyday guy. He's big fight Goku. Use him as such. Like the video, share your favorite Goku memory in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe. Later.